So I hear you like German expressionist films. You don't? Well then, why are you here? Wait. You're being forced to watch something. Well, maybe I can get you interested. The German expressionist movement began, well, in Germany, during the golden age of the Weimar Republic. Germany was recovering from the Great War. A war that they had lost and had put them into great debt. But now, they were finally on their feet again. And with all this new prosperity came free time. And obviously, free time is film. German filmmaking began to question the fundamentals of film. From their question came a new genre of film, Expressionism. Expressionism, as defined by David Hudson, is a style of film which uses lighting, set, and audio to visually display and highlight a character's emotions. It's amazing what you can do with proper lighting and set to express a character's emotions. But, I guess you really don't care because you're being forced to watch this. Well, I'm going to keep on talking until you care. For example, how can anybody not enjoy The Last Laugh? Made in 1924, it exemplifies the German Expressionist movement. It was directed by F.W. Murnau. It is one of my favorite films from this movement. The main character, played by Emil Janning, is a doorman at the Atlantic Hotel. He lives for his job. The doorman is happy, but something happens. One day, when he gets to work, he receives a letter. He has found out that he has been demoted to janitor. This is where expressionism comes in. Just in this one shot of his face, his sadness is shown in vivid detail. The lighting and makeup bring out the tragedy in Janning's face. Expressionist films focus on the mind and use external factors to reveal a character's emotions to the audience. And now for a simple test. I look sad, but without external factors, it can't resonate with you, the audience. Now I'm in a new setting, with new lighting, and my frown resonates that much more. You can tell I'm sad. Why am I sad? Because you don't care about German expressionism, that's why. The manipulation of the setting is used to show emotion as well. Notice how the wind pushes the doorman back to his hotel, his job, his love. But the hotel rejects him. Just watch. Oh, so you're not interested yet? I bet you think this has nothing to do with movies today. Wrong. German Expressionism is everywhere, from Tim Burton to Alfred Hitchcock. The closest genre today that relates to 1920 German Expressionism is film noir. Film noir is a type of film that derives from the Expressionist movement and uses low-key lighting in addition to stylized sets. One modern film in particular that follows expressionist techniques is the 1986 Blue Velvet, directed by David Lynch. Elements not possible in the 1924 film could be used extensively. The two obvious ones being dialogue. What kind of beer do you like? Heineken. Heineken? Fuck that shit! Pabst Blue Ribbon! And color. Velvet was definitely not the first expressionist film to use color and dialogue, but what it did was tell a story with a shocking theme. Never before had such profanity or destructive themes transcended into expressionism. 
For example, in this opening scene, the overly colorful and happy scenery is contrasted with a darker purpose. There is a deeper meaning to what is happening under the surface. The choice of the soundtrack is so much more varied than in 1924, allowing for such motifs like the recurring title song. Remember, it's all under the surface. Psychological problems that he undergoes reflect in the film's right. overall imagery. Now it's dark. Let's fuck! I'll fuck anything that moves! <laughs> Hello, baby. Well, Shut it's up. based on Jeffrey's it's curiosity. Daddy, you shithead. Where's my it burger? leads him to Dorothy Vallon's apartment where he hides in the closet. Can't Frank Booth, played by me? Dennis Hopper, has just been introduced into the film. He is Dorothy's deranged lover. What Jeffrey sees next is what brings on the psychological issues that are shown throughout the film. Now it's dark. <sighs> Oh, mommy! Mommy! This is where mommy. dark lighting and the set, mommy. especially the boundary of the closet, reveal Jeffrey's her. psyche. Get ready to fuck! You fuckers, fucker! You fucker! No matter what character, whether it's an evil, drugged out rapist, or a man who's lost his job, the emotional output is equal because of the techniques presented. Confused? Basically, this means directors use everything at their disposal to reveal a character's emotions. Now for example, let's look at the doorman's dream. He has just returned to his family and home with his doorman's uniform on. He celebrates his daughter's wedding and gets so drunk he falls asleep. Now in his dream, everybody is celebrating the job and how great he is. Simply put, the doorman is so depressed by the loss of his job, he is in denial and this is shown vividly with the use of blurred out shots and wobbly camera work. Similar to the dream sequence in the last laugh with the doorman, the dream sequence, or should I say nightmare sequence of Jeffrey reveals his emotions at this point in the story. His dream is very distorted and deranged, showing Jeffrey's anxiety and confusion at his current situation, which is presented to him in horrible vivid detail.
look at some of the interesting parallels between the endings of both films. In The Last Laugh, there are actually two endings, and the one we will look at first is the original. Jane's character is at wit's end and has lost everything. In his final moment of depression, he falls asleep in the very room he cleans. This shows how he finally accepts his fate to live in the toilets for the rest of his life. The night watchman comes by and puts his coat on the door. This leaves the film with a melancholy but somehow optimistic ending, even though nothing really seems to have gotten better. You're probably curious about the other ending, aren't you? Well, it's a lot more optimistic. What happens next is controversial, because no one knows if the director meant for this ending to be used. But the bottom line is that it was a direct influence from Hollywood films at this time. Happy Ending sold, and Renan added this ending after international distribution. The doorman, who was in such a horrible state, is given a chance at a new beginning as a millionaire. Well, 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 look at this. What are the chances of this happening? That's right, none. It's a typical Hollywood ending. Oh, and look at this. The nice watchman who has helped him in his time of need has received part of the fortune. Well, hot diggity, isn't this the nicest old ending you've ever seen? Yeah, it makes me sick too. But let's forget about that and think about the ending to Blue Velvet. <laughs> Well, this film is most definitely an American film, and it does end with Jeffrey defeating his enemy and his psychological issue when he kills Frank. It's all over, Jeffrey. Maybe Robins are here. I don't see how they could do that. I could never read a book. It's a strange world, isn't it? Even though the bug has been eaten, the town will always be scarred with this sense of evil. The final home run hitter of this point is when Dorothy is revealed in the shop with her son. The Blue Velvet song plays and it cuts to the credits. Nothing is normal and nothing is what it seems to be. The ending drives this point and exemplifies German expressionism.